Hi guys! Welcome to my YouTube channel. So before we get started make sure to hit the like button also subscribe to my channel. In this video we will talk about Los Angeles, City of Angels. So make sure to watch the full video. America's second city boasts many a moniker, La, La La Land, and Tinseltown to name a few. Of Los Angeles many nicknames however, the City of Angels stands out. From golden sunsets in Malibu to palm trees in Beverly Hills, the roar of the crowd at the Rose Bowl or stars on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, the City of Angels has long attracted those seeking fortune and glory. In this short essay we look at the Los Angeles of past, present, and future. How did a thriving Native American village on the banks of a small river in Southern California transform into America's second largest city and the global leader in film and television production? Lay's growth and development mirrors that of the larger United States. Lay is a place where technological-driven change ushered in an era of prosperity and created the modern city of angels, the Tongva people. Prior to the arrival of Spanish colonialists and settlers from Mexico in the 18th century, the Los Angeles Basin was inhabited by the Tongva, a Native American people indigenous to Southern California. Generations of Tongva lived along the banks of the Los Angeles River in a prosperous village they called Yongva. Skilled in substance farming, fishing, and other hunter-gatherer activities, the Tongva were prolific traders and engaged extensively with neighboring peoples. European settlers would benefit greatly from Tongva people's knowledge of the land. Tongva had long identified the best areas for human habitation and practiced sophisticated land management techniques. Built on Tongva lands, contemporary Los Angeles owes much of its existence to these native inhabitants. It's a debt the city has largely failed to repay. European Arrival and Colonization European arrival and sustained settlement in the Los Angeles Basin did not occur until the latter part of the 18th century. An initial expedition led by Spanish and Franciscan missionaries arrived in August 1769. Upon witnessing firsthand a beautiful river flowing across the land, missionaries named it for Nuestra Señora de Los Angeles de la Porchumcula, or Our Lady, the Queen of the Angels of Porchumcula. Today, visitors can tour the Los Angeles Plaza Historic District across from Union Station and explore the oldest inhabited parts of the city. The churches here have direct connection to the first European settlement constructed beginning in September 1781. You can see a monument celebrating this original town and wander the streets surrounding the park. Though they bear little resemblance to 18th century pasture, there is an unmistakable sense of history there. Settlement Expansion and Growth The Franciscan settlement remained a small ranching town for several decades. It was not until well into the 19th century, and following Mexico's independence from Spain, that Los Angeles underwent appreciable development. Between roughly 1821 and outbreak of the Spanish-American in War in 1846, the city nearly tripled in size. Agricultural production and cattle ranching became increasingly important to the local economy. The first systematic efforts to irrigate large portions of the basin occurred during these years, financed in part by the Mexican government. Authorities transferred large tracts of land into private hands. Enticed by the promised fertile soils, speculators flocked to the region from both the United States and Europe. Among them was the portly John Louis Vignes, a French amigre eager to ply his craft as a vendor. Vinges acquired land and set to work essentially creating the California wine industry which on its own today would be the world's fourth largest. Arrival of the Railroads and Industry The arrival of the railroads beginning in late 1869 transformed Los Angeles into a modern metropolis. The network gradually expanded from a local system to a regional one connecting Northern California to truly national system with the arrival of the Santa Fe Railroad. Los Angeles was finally linked to the great commercial, industrial, and financial cities back east. Decades before the Panama Canal, producers could at last ship goods to market in Los Angeles. Railroad companies actively promoted California real estate, of which they controlled vast swaths. Immense fortunes accrued to the rail barons when money and people began flowing in. Philanthropy followed, and some of the region's major civic institutions traced their founding to this time, including, most prominently, Stanford University. While railroad-related wealth helped fund development in Los Angeles, it also left a darker legacy. 
Forced labor, much of it performed by mistreated Chinese immigrants, was widespread and instrumental in the building of America's national rail networks. Oil boom and breakneck growth. Following integration with the national rail network, Los Angeles began to flourish. The city's population doubled again between 1870 and 1900. Merchants, residents, and enthusiastic boosters relentlessly promoted L.A. as an alternative to San Francisco. Wealthy Easterners, attracted by the region's climate and profit potential, eagerly invested and sought to establish themselves. Today, the areas near City Hall and Civic Center were the beating heart of Los Angeles' early boom years. Dozens of innovative architectural works dotted the area. Unfortunately, they have long since been demolished or repurposed. During this time, the city received its second big break, the discovery of oil in 1892. Through the first decade of the 20th century, Los Angeles was a hop of activism and radical politics. New generations of immigrants eagerly engaged in politics, while intense campaigns to organize labor eventually transformed Los Angeles into a solidly pro-union city. The Roaring Twenties, Uka the Golden Years the 1920s were in many ways the city's golden years. The decade-long economic expansion helped Los Angeles double in size yet again, surpassing 1.2 million residents by 1929. This is when Hollywood first entered the lexicon as a stand-in for the U.S. film industry. Fledgling production companies founded the decade prior expanded to meet growing domestic and international demand. The iconic Hollywood sign went up in 1923 perched on an overlook in Hollywood Hills. Once the silent film era came to a close, Hollywood emerged as a global trendsetter and magnet for countless dreamers. Budding starlets with silver screen ambitions paced Hollywood Boulevard and eagerly courted producers. Grauman's Chinese Theater opened in 1929 and became the place to hold world premieres. Today, people crane their necks to see the nearly 200 celebrity handprints, footprints, and autographs memorialized in concrete in front of the theater building. A wartime economy. War in the Pacific following the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor meant Los Angeles, as a major port city on the U.S. mainland, would play a significant role. Wartime manufacturing expanded greatly. Factories were built or repurposed for wartime construction, and a new wave of migration added to Los Angeles' now decades-long population boom. As America's key oil-producing region, Los Angeles was strategically important. War planners worried constantly about a surprise attack or invasion by Japanese ground forces. Though it was later confirmed plans for such an invasion were drawn up by leaders in Tokyo, Los Angeles, like the rest of the United States, was spared wartime destruction. During the war years, Japanese Americans faced increased suspicion and outright violence. President Franklin D. Roosevelt issued his infamous Executive Order 9066, which authorized the removal of anyone of Japanese descent to concentration camps in the American interior. Estimates suggest upwards of 80,000 people were forcibly removed from the Los Angeles area during these years. What do you think of our video? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button. Also subscribe to our channel before you go. Thank you for watching.